Trouble losing weight? Need more energy? Want to improve your health? You had a fitness or nutrition question? I probably have an answer for you. Oh yeah, you gotta love that. All right guys, so welcome everyone, welcome. I know we're a couple minutes early, but you know what? Why not? So I'm gonna give you guys a couple more minutes of awesomeness today. Hope you guys are having a great day. So uh, let me know in the comments where you're joining me in from. Let me know that you can hear me okay and that you can see me. That would be awesome. Just quickly, yes, everything's good. Just to confirm, that'd be terrific. And without any further ado, let's jump right into this. So right now, again, I'm recommending you have a glass of water. This is a mason jar full of water. This is about 500 milliliters or two cups. The reason for that is because water is really important for you. Did you know that? Water is super, super important. And check this out, a simple way to reduce your appetite if you have a tough time eating a lot of food is just drink like this much water before your next meal and just see what it does to your appetite and your desire or your perceived desire to eat a lot of food. It's actually very, very powerful. So let's get this bad boy started. Not that it's a bad boy, just I use that phrase for whatever reason. And... It's been amazingly warm here in Toronto. Uh, it's like yesterday it was 27 degrees Celsius. Today it's 20 degrees Celsius. I don't know if that is in Fahrenheit, but it's pretty warm, like abnormally warm for this time of year. So it's been pretty cool. And now I'm basically locked in the studio, no windows, no sunlight, and we're doing this hangout. That's how much I care about you guys. I'm willing to forego beautiful sunshine to be with you guys here. So I wanna thank you for joining me as well. And I'm just gonna pull up our Ask Yuri questions doc to see if we've got any questions that I can answer. Okay. I'm just gonna randomly sift right through our, our, our list of questions here and choose one. Okay, so this, let's see here, what would be a good one for you guys? Hmm. Okay, so this one's actually pretty interesting. How many of you have kids? If you guys have kids, you'll enjoy this. I've got three young boys, as you probably know. So this, question's come, this, come, this question comes from Nishi, and she wants to know, I believe it's a she, what would you recommend for breakfast for children? That's it. Okay, so this is a good question. I've got three kids, and I'm always, I'm not super Nazi-ish about this, but vigilant as about, you know, how do we start their day on the right foot? Um, a lot of times, they actually don't even have breakfast sometimes. It's actually quite interesting because they never listen to us, so they come upstairs way too late, and it's like, okay, it's time to go to school. So um, generally we'll have, I recommend, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or an adult, the, the recommendations are the same. Protein in the morning with limited amounts of carbohydrates, okay? If you go heavy carbohydrates in the morning, your kid's going to be a zombie at school. They're going to be like totally spaced out. They're going to be craving foods. They're going to act all weird. That's something you want to avoid. And guess what? The same thing happens with adults. So if you're an adult, if you're watching this, doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, start your morning with at least 20 grams of protein. This could take the form of eggs, like an omelet. You could do a protein smoothie. So this morning I had a smoothie that was frozen cherries, two tablespoons of peanut butter, two scoops of protein powder, a vanilla protein powder because it worked out well with the flavors. What else? Uh, coconut oil, flax oil, ground flax seeds, and almond milk and water. So that was my morning smoothie. So in that smoothie, we had about probably 25 grams of protein. And it's a great, it's so important to start your day with protein because if you're not, your cravings and your blood sugar is gonna go out of control for the rest of the day. And it's really important to start your day on the right foot if you care about making healthier decisions and choices throughout the day. Does that make sense? So. Whether or not you've got kids, again, just start them off with some protein in the morning. This could be even the, you know, my kids love wieners and beans. So we'll try to get healthy hot dogs, if you can even find those, right? And then we'll combine them with our beans, right? So beans are a great source of fiber, carbohydrates, and protein. Sometimes we'll have that in the morning. A lot of times we'll put that in their lunch. And yeah, there we go. Okay, Trina, so uh, my thoughts on intermittent fasting. Okay, I'm like, it's awesome. Highly recommended. And I'm just gonna give you the link to the be all and end all post on intermittent fasting on my blog, because that would be a much more effective use of this discussion. Uh, so I'm just gonna post this link in here for you, Trina. And I'd strongly recommend you read that, how to do intermittent fasting, 19 popular questions answered and obviously backed by science. So every single question that I've ever received about intermittent fasting, I've 
basically answered here with the research to back it up. And it's very, very, very important stuff. So um, everything you need to know is right there. But yes, I love intermittent fasting. Okay. I'm just sorry, I'm just refreshing my feed on Facebook here because again, I don't see the comments in real time for whatever reason. And if you missed this for whatever reason, you're watching the replay on YouTube, if you're watching this on uh, my Facebook page as a replay, uh, one thing I'm gonna ask of you is if you're enjoying these live hangouts, be sure to share this video with your friends on Facebook, share this on YouTube if you're watching the replay. The more shares we get, the more people we're able to impact, and the more often I'll do these, right? But if we don't get a massive number of shares, then I'm gonna continue doing them once a week, unless you guys want me to do it more often, in which case you would share this video with your friends. All right, so let's go back to the list of questions in the Google Doc. Um, oh, this is a good one. I think you guys will enjoy this. So I don't even know how to pronounce this person's name, so I'm not going to try it, but they're asking, what's the, uh, what about the idea of burning more fat post-workout by not having carbs right after? Why would I want to replenish my glycogen stores with carbs if my goal is weight loss? Don't I want to deplete glycogen in order to force the body to burn fat? Doesn't eating carbs post-workout stop fat burning mode? This is a really good question. And I talk about this extensively in my last book, The All Day Fat Burning Diet, as a really smart strategy for um, helping your body accelerate its ability to use fat as a fuel source. So basically what happens here is your muscles and your liver and your fat, sorry, let me repeat that. Your muscles and your liver store carbohydrates in the form of what's called glycogen, okay? Now your muscles and fat, your muscles and liver only can contain, or they can only hold so much glycogen at once. And then there's like no more storage. It's like a storage locker. Once it's full, it's full. You can't put any more stuff in there. The troubling part is that uh, fat cells don't, can, they don't really store glycogen, but they convert sugar and carbohydrates into fat that's stored in fat cells. So these fat cells, they can just keep expanding without without like a limit. So they're not like fixed storage lockers, they're more like water balloons, if you will. So the whole idea here is that if you're working out, I'm a huge believer, if you're working out in the morning, especially very powerful, it's best to work out on an empty stomach. So you've just fasted overnight, your blood sugar is, let's say, a little bit lower than normal. And if you can tap into that at this point of time, and this actually applies even if you're working out later in the day, right? So if you're in a fasted state where your body hasn't had any food for a few hours, what's gonna end up happening is that your body is going to more likely rely on fat as a fuel source to a greater degree than it would if you just had something to top up your blood sugar. So I hope that makes sense because what that means, I'm not saying that you're gonna use fat as a primary fuel source, but what, you're gonna, what your body's gonna do is it's gonna look first and foremost when you're going through exercise, when you're doing some type of activity, your body's gonna to turn to blood sugar as its most immediate fuel source. Once it's kind of blown through that, it's gonna start breaking down glycogen from your muscles and liver into blood sugar to keep your blood sugar up. And it's gonna go through that because that blood sugar is easily converted into energy, okay? I'm not gonna go into the whole physiological process. But what ends up happening is if your muscles are already somewhat lower in glycogen and your blood sugar is already somewhat lower, then there's less of those reserves to turn to and your body actually starts pulling, breaking down your triglycerides, your, your stored fat into uh, free fatty acids, which are then converted in the liver into um, energy metabolites or substrates, right? So you actually can facilitate fat loss by working out in a fasted state and then after the workout, stay in a fasted state for about an hour or so. This is what I would not recommend for athletes, in which case post-workout recovery is very important. But for the average individual who wants to burn fat, if you can spend about an hour post-workout without any food, your body is now gonna be searching for energy. It's gonna be searching to replenish itself. And where's it gonna go? It's gonna go more readily to your fat stores. So that's why, great question, I'm happy you brought this up, is, is that that's the power of not eating in and around your workouts from a fat loss perspective. Now, as a former pro soccer player, would I do this before a game and afterwards? No, right? Would I do this before a training session? No. Um, that's a very different, it's different, okay? It's not, we're not talking about fat loss, we're talking about performance, which is slightly different. So I hope that makes sense. 
What are my thoughts on the ketogenic diet? Um, I mean, in short bouts, it's fine, but like to live on a ketogenic diet, I would strongly discourage that. That's, I don't, I don't it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, okay, so Josiane, I saw your video about diabetes in which you say diabetes is reversible. What is raw potato starch? We speak French, so maybe it has another name. Also, more than cinnamon, apple cider vinegar, the raw potato starch, clean eating and exercise. Could you tell me a bit more about what would be effective to reverse diabetes or pre-diabetes? Well, what else is there? So there's there's a, a, I think Mark Twain said this. He says, he said, you come to me for a new idea when you still haven't used the one I just gave you. And that's kind of what that question reminds me of, Josiane. And it's not your fault. It's, believe me, everybody is like this. They're always looking for the next magic pill. There's nothing more to do. There's nothing more to do other than eating clean and exercising. And if you incorporate cinnamon, apple cider vinegar, raw potato starch, those are kind of like cherries on the icing. But there's nothing else you have to do. And I, like, and I know this doesn't sound sexy, but that's it, right? Reversing diabetes is the most optimistic, sorry, type two diabetes is the most optimistic disease to have because first of all, it's a kick in the ass and a wake up call to be like, hey, listen, maybe you should clean things up a bit. And second, once you do that, you can quickly reverse the entire condition. And I've, and I've seen this. My own dad had it. Uh, you know, thousands of our customers and clients have had it, and we've been able to help them reverse it. So it's not like, you know, a stage four cancer, which is much more difficult to reverse, if at all. But with diabetes, it's simply changing and cleaning up your diet and moving your body more. And then raw potato starch is essentially a type of starch that is not broken down and absorbed in your body. So basically what it ends up doing is it feeds your good bacteria and as a byproduct of that creates uh, something called butyric acid. And butyric acid helps to seal the gut. It's also highly anti-inflammatory throughout the body and it's been shown in a number of studies to help reduce blood sugar or kind of help mitigate and control blood sugar levels, reduce the, um, Sorry, it makes your body more sensitive to insulin and it helps actually helps people lose weight more effectively. So I don't know what it's called in French. Starch de pomme de terre. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't even know. So, so maybe just do a quick search on Google raw potato starch in French and see what comes up. It's different from raw potato flour. Okay, not the same. So look for unmodified raw potato starch. Bob's Red Mill, I believe, is the brand that's probably the most popular one, and that's what I'd recommend. Hakeem, what are your thoughts about creatine? Well, Hakeem, I answered this last week, so if you can do a quick, you know what, instead of you searching, why don't I just post it here? I'm going to just post last week's video because I talked about this in good detail, so I'm not going to repeat myself. And I'm just going to take a moment here to get the video for you. Again, if you haven't seen my previous videos on this stuff, go to um, Facebook, just go through my feed, or go through on my YouTube channel, and I'll just post the link for you here. Um, I believe it is in this video. If it's not, it's in the previous one. So I apologize if it's not on that one, but it's in the previous one. Okay. Uh, Biviana, my issue is with carbohydrates. I get bloated and retain tons of fluids. What's the best diet approach to deal with bloating? Even water gives me pregnant belly look. So that, for me, that kind of sounds like SIBO. Again, that's just, a, I'm just throwing that out there. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Generally, when you have SIBO, you get that kind of bloating, distended feeling, like instantly upon eating carbohydrates. So the first thing I would recommend is, 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 is consult with a naturopathic doctor or a nutritionist who's well-versed in SIBO. You can also check out scdlifestyle.com. My friends Jordan and Steven run that site, and it's pretty much all geared towards the specific carbohydrate diet as it pertains to SIBO. Um, so that's what I'd recommend for you on that one. Okay. Let us refresh the feed. That's so, uh, so frustrating. I can't see the comments that may have been posted a few minutes ago. It doesn't show me this continual loop of comments. So if you've got a question or a comment, I just post it in. Hopefully the feed will update itself here. I'm just gonna go back into the Ask Yuri Doc. And that is a long question. Wow, that's like 
two pages. I think I'll skip that one. Um, notes, if you're going to submit questions, please keep them brief. Okay, that'd be awesome. All right. Okay, this is a simple one. How much apple cider vinegar should I drink? Okay, so this is a really simple answer. There's no side effects to apple cider vinegar other than the taste if you can't tolerate it. So in this two cup thing of water, I never measure anything. So I would free pour, and I guess it would end up being about two tablespoons worth of apple cider vinegar. So, I mean, technically you could, if you wanted to drink about a liter of apple cider vinegar a day, if you could tolerate that, go for it. There's really no ill side effects. Um, but at the minimum, anytime you're drinking water, just add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and, and it's a simple way to really get the benefits of all that goodness into your body. So that's a pretty simple one. Again, don't 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 worry too much. No fuss about the, the measurements and the specific is it one tablespoon or half a teaspoon? I mean, none of that stuff makes none of that stuff makes a difference. Okay, it's gonna drive you insane, and don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, this is a good one. So this is from uh, Fit Ange. Fit Ange, that's not her real name, I don't think. Was wondering about the was what was wondering about eating smaller meals more frequently. I was interested when you said, or this is referring to a video. Uh, was refer was interested when you said that eating often raises your insulin. Yes. Okay. So here's here's the thing. When you should I get the drawing? Should I get the the whiteboard for this one? I think we have to get out the whiteboard. This is this is worth it. Okay. Let me just clear it up here. And let me make sure you guys can actually see this. Okay, so I'm gonna just shift the camera down. Okay, so here's, here's what we're talking about. So when you eat food, okay, I'm gonna draw a little chart here. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so when you eat something, I'll use the red for the blood sugar, okay? Your blood sugar goes up when you eat food. So let's say we had a meal. Our blood sugar goes up, and I'm just going to put food. Hopefully you can see that. Obviously you can't. There we go. Okay, so blood sugar goes up. Now, it would be very dangerous if our blood sugar stayed up here, right? Because our body knows that high blood sugar is one of the most detrimental things in the human body. It'll literally corrode your, your arteries and organs and cause all sorts of damage. It'll cause blindness, limb amputations. That's basically what happens with diabetics as the, as the disease progresses. So that's not something we want. So what does the body do? It secretes a hormone called insulin, and insulin goes out, and it basically goes up in conjunction with the rise in blood sugar, and it stays up, and it's, what it does is insulin is, uh, it's kind of like this, uh, this vehicle that helps glucose or sugar come out of the blood and into the cells. So when insulin goes up, what ends up happening is that you get into storage mode, right? And then blood sugar is gonna fall, and then insulin is gonna follow that, okay? So this is kind of like what happens, right? So then you have this like steady thing-ish until you have another meal and it goes back up. Is your blood sugar here, right? Insulin is gonna go up as well. And then everything comes back down and so forth. Now that's normally what happens, and obviously that's not a perfect rendition of your blood sugar insulin curve, but you get the, hopefully you get the point. The whole thing here to understand is that insulin is an important hormone, but we don't want too much of it inside the blood. Because if it's high, basically what that's telling our body is this, okay? It is one of the only hormones that focus on this one thing. Storage, storage. Okay? So if you want to burn fat and you want to be better, in better health, eating all the time is the worst thing you can do, right? It's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous because a lot of people have, for whatever reason, believe that metabolism is like a fireplace. And in order to keep your fireplace firing, what do you do? You feed it with more wood. But that doesn't make sense in the human body. Not all analogies are accurate. And this is one this is a perfect example, okay? So if you're constantly feeding your internal metabolism, your internal fire with more food, that's not keeping your metabolism elevated. It's, sorry, that, that is keeping your metabolism elevated, but understand that metabolism is not what you think it is. Metabolism is the, 
general sum of everything that's building up and breaking down in your body. So don't get that confused with metabolic rate, which is what you want higher to burn more calories. Okay, see the distinction there? Metabolism versus metabolic rate. Metabolism is like the blanket results of everything, all the processes happening in your body. So naturally when you eat more food, there's more things going on. So your metabolism is elevated, but that doesn't mean you're burning more calories or burning more fat. What you're doing is storing more of it because your insulin is high all the time, because your blood sugar is high all the time, because you're eating all the time. Do you see this? So the, the advice to eat six meals a day or every two to three hours, that's fine if you're hungry all the time. But again, you don't necessarily need to eat that much food. Sometimes we're hungry out of boredom or anxiety. So understand the difference between psychological and physiological hunger. This is, this is why intermittent fasting is so powerful because when you dissociate yourself from food for like a day, you learn a lot about why you eat in the first place. So instead of eating six times a day, or I shall just, you know, some of the research shows if you have two meals a day or six meals a day, as long as total calories are the same, there is no difference in terms of its impact on your ability to lose weight. Now, I say that um, because a lot of people think that if they don't eat enough, they're gonna go into starvation mode and they're gonna, their body's gonna hold on to fat. That doesn't happen. Actually, the reverse is more likely to happen by eating all the time. Insulin, high insulin also initiates inflammation inside your body and inflammation tells your brain, hold on, not good, stressful situation. And what does your brain tell your body to do? Slow down, conserve, and hold on. That is the way our body and brain is built. I talk about this extensively in my book, The All Day Fat Burning Diet. If you haven't picked it up, get a copy because it'll answer all of these questions and give you a much better understanding of this specific topic. Does that make sense? It's really important to know this stuff, guys. This is why I do what I do because I really believe most, well, most people, 95% of the population, the human population, knows more about their car than they do about their human body, than their own body. And the reason for that is because we are given an owner's manual with our car and we are given nothing, nothing with our body. When you come into this world, are you taught anything about how your body works? No. You go to school, do they teach you anything about how your body works? Zero. It's disgraceful. And is it any wonder why we have so much, so many problems health-wise? We don't know anything about how our own body operates, okay? And this is why I do what I do and why I've developed all the courses like Super Nutrition Academy, because I want to empower you to understand how your own darn body works, okay? It's super important to know this stuff. You know, it's something that I wish our kids were taught at school, but as a parent, I'm going to teach my own kids this. I would much rather get them a book on how the human body works in like a cool cartoon way than having them read comics all the time. Not that there's anything wrong with comics, but again, there's a certain level of responsibility that we have to take with, with our own body, right? We're, this is the only body we have. So how do I feel about, uh, Gabriella, how do you feel about cryotherapy? Awesome. Uh, whether it's in an actual cryotherapy chamber or in a cold tub, it's terrific. I've done both. And if I can do more of them, if I can do it more often, I definitely would. So it's tremendous at reducing inflammation, speeding healing, awesome. What's a good way to strengthen your wrists? Um, interesting question. Okay, so here's a, a cool thing you can do. Um, let's see if I can, let's see if I can do this somehow. Is this gonna work? Okay, so I gotta, I gotta create an apparatus here for you. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna, watch, I'm gonna get creative here. So what you're gonna do is if you have, you're gonna use some type of dowel, some type of like wooden pole, a little, it doesn't have to be a long one, just, you know, maybe a foot. You're gonna take a rope and you're gonna tie it, obviously securely around the dowel. And then what you're gonna, I'm using my headphones here, literally. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hang a weight. Okay, so let's just say that this is the weight. You're gonna hang a weight and a very light weight, like, you know, five pounds or less. So let's say the weight is attached. Then what you're going to do is, I'm going to assume, let's just, again, this is a terrible example, but let's just assume it's hanging from the dowel. You're going to hold the dowel like this, okay? And you're going to start to do this type of motion. Keep it up at shoulder height. And this is a great exercise that a lot of hockey players and tennis players do to strengthen their wrist in both flexion and extension. And you're basically holding your arms out here 
as you're rolling up. So as you're rolling this up, the weight comes up higher and then it comes down lower. Beautiful exercise for strengthening the wrists. I don't know if that's what you're after, but that's a great exercise that you can do. So hopefully that's, uh, that, that serves you well. Gabriella, how does apple cider vinegar help with blood sugar levels? Basically, it has a compound called acetic acid, which somehow what it does is, let's just go back to here for a second. If you, and I'll use the green marker this time, right? Why not? Got the markers, why not use different colors? This actually matches my shirt almost. Okay, so let's say you have food with ACV, not ACDC, ACV, ACVC. What the studies actually show is that the acetic acid helps reduce the blood sugar impact of that food. So let's say green is the blood sugar after apple cider vinegar. So you've had, let's say you're having a donut, which you should absolutely never have. Sometimes, maybe, if you want, but whatever. You have apple cider vinegar beforehand. It, what it does is it lowers the blood sugar impact of that sugary food. So I don't know the specifics, but I, I do know that the compound in apple cider vinegar, apple um, acetic acid, has been shown in numerous studies to have that effect. And when that happens, what happens to insulin? Is insulin going to be higher or lower? You know, right? Lower. Lower insulin, better overall outcome. And by the way, cinnamon does that as well. It's funny because I don't have a teaching degree, but I teach. That's what I do. And it's always funny to talk to my friends who are teachers. I'm like, listen, just turn on a camera and start teaching people what you know. It's the best way to add value. Denise, welcome. I'm glad you got me live as well. Cool. Okay, so, uh, oh my goodness, 12.55 already? Guys, I got to shut this bad boy down. Guys, I have another thing I got to do in about five minutes. So... I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Remember, if you've enjoyed this, if you've enjoyed my little animated renditions here, share this on Facebook. Just click the share button, get your friends involved, let them know about this stuff. Really, really important as it pertains to blood sugar, diabetes, insulin. This is stuff you have to know, and most of us don't. So that's why I'm here to provide what I can, what I can for you so you know this stuff. And remember, every week, every Wednesday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, I guess, I'm right here on my fan page answering your questions and hooking you up with the goods to help you live an awesomely healthy and fit life and making healthy and fit simple again. Uh, if you guys want to join us at the blog, urielcame.com is the place to get our daily content. We're posting amazing recipes, workout ideas, uh, answering a lot of questions with respect to health and natural remedies. And in the meantime, hope you have an amazing day. We'll finish off with a cool outro intro, and I'll uh, see you next week. Ciao. Trouble losing weight? Need more energy? Want to improve your health? You had a fitness or nutrition question? I probably have an answer for you. 